sa DZRA, sa Elizal. Look at the bus, it's time to win. A corporate thing. So, ang sinasabi ko na lang. Isang mapayapang hapon Pilipinas. Ito po ang inyong balerina ng bayan, Lisa Makuha, na bumabati sa lahat ng nakikinig sa DZRH at nanonood sa RHTV. Lalo na sa mga kasamahan nating alagad ng sining at kultura sa buong bansa. Huling linggo ng Mayo at patuloy pa rin tayo sa ating espesyal na serye para sa buwang ito kung saan itinatampok natin ang iba't ibang international organizations na nagpapalawak ng cultural and artistic exchange sa pagitan ng Pilipinas at ng kanikanilang mga bansa. At sa pagtatapos ng sering ito, makakasama natin ang tagapagsalita ng isang institusyon na may napakalalim na impluensya sa ating bansa culturally and historically. Kaya't huwag kayong aalis, samahan ninyo kami sa kalahating oras ng masayang kwentuhan kasama ang kinatawan ng Instituto Cervantes, Manila. Ang Instituto Cervantes ay itinatag sa bansang Espanya noong 1991 upang palawakin ng wika at kulturang Espanyol sa mga bansang may kinalaman sa kasaysayan nito. Ipinangalan ang instituto sa tanyag na manunulat na si Miguel de Cervantes. At ngayon ay matatagpuan ang mga tanggapan nito sa 77 lungsod at 44 na bansa. Taong 1994 nang dumating sa Pilipinas ang prinsesa ng Espanya na si Doña Elena upang buksan ang Instituto Cervantes sa Maynila. Kabilang sa mga layunin nito ang magturo ng mga kurso sa wikang Kastila, magbigay ng mga Diploma of Spanish as a Foreign Language o DELE exams at certification at tumulong sa mga nagpapakadalubhasa sa mga araling Hispaniko. Ang Instituto Cervantes Library ay nagtataglay ng mahigit sa 20,000 dokumento at mga audiovisual materials na maaaring gamitin ng mga mananaliksik, estudyante man o profesional. Bukod dito, tumutulong din ang Instituto Cervantes na mag-organisa ng iba't ibang cultural events, partikular na sa larangan ng teatro, sayaw, musika, panitikan, sining biswal, arkitektura at pagluluto. Isang mainit na pagbati ang hatid ng Art to Art sa direktor ng Instituto Cervantes, Manila na si Dr. Carlos Madrid. Buenas tardes, Director Madrid, and welcome to Art to Art. Buenas tardes, Lisa. Muchas gracias. <laughs> um, uh, how many years have you been the uh, director of Instituto Cervantes? Three. 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 Okay. This uh -huh. is the third one. Uh huh. Uh huh. And how are you finding it here in Manila? Well, I have. I, I live here years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I always loved it ever mm -hmm. since I was uh, very young. The Philippines was very special for me, mm -hmm. so I feel at home. Mm -hmm. Very much at home, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the kind of work that we do in Instituto Cervantes de Manila mm -hmm. is very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. We notice that the people has a demand and appreciation of, of the, the service that we, we give, mm -hmm. and it's actually very, a very rewarding experience. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Speaking of service, um, what are the services that Instituto Cervantes Manila gives to the Filipino, uh, your Filipino clientele and uh, I guess to not, do you have other offices or partners also in the provinces? Because the whole of the Philippines is listening to us now. Yes, we wish. <laughs> Actually, we're looking forward to, to expand our activities. But Instituto Cervantes is as a non-for-profit government organization of, mm -hmm. of Spain. Mm -hmm. It's a network of cultural centers around the world. So it's mainly cultural centers. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, related with the pro to the promotion of uh, the Spanish language mm -hmm. and the contribution to the promotion of the cultures of Spain mm -hmm. and the cultures of the Spanish-speaking countries mm -hmm. in in dialogue with the culture of and the cultures of the Philippines. I see. So what we pro we provide is not only classes of Spanish mm -hmm. and other official languages of Spain, mm -hmm. but uh, we offer cultural events, exhibits, mm -hmm. film screenings, and we are uh, the, the, the cultural center of the Embassy of Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's, uh, uh, as you may know, a very active 
mm -hmm. agent in the in the cultural scene in, in mm -hmm. the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We are mainly concentrated in Manila mm -hmm. for, for practical reasons. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the geographic distribution of the Philippines is w way too wide for our capacity. Yeah. But uh, we're looking forward to have um, collaborations in Cebu. Mm -hmm. we, or we have these occasional uh, cultural activities around the country. For mm -hmm. example, we have the film festival in Spanish, mm -hmm. Pelicula, every mm -hmm. October. Mm -hmm. And uh, with our partnership with, uh, with the Philippine Development Council of the Philippines, mm -hmm. the films in Spanish are screened in the cinematex mm. of of the country, Baguio, mm -hmm. Davao, mm -hmm. Iloilo, mm -hmm. Zamboanga, mm -hmm. and Cebu starting mm -hmm. this, this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this local alliance with uh, local institutions is one of the key elements. Mm -hmm. The way we, we perform the cultural initiatives is always in dialogue with, with Philippine culture, with mm -hmm. our Philippine counterpart. I see. In as much as it helps to promote contemporary Philippine culture at the same time, or yeah. Philippine heritage, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. what we call it uh, culture in dialogue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you find it, uh, I don't know, maybe easier that the cultures of the Philippines and Spain are, you know, and the history of the Philippines and Spain are very uh, closely linked and entwined? I think so for everyone from, from Spain or from uh, Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we always feel a sense certain sense of warmth mm -hmm. and familiarity. Mm -hmm. And I have heard from many Filipinos in Spain mm -hmm. that uh, when, when they talk about where they're from, if they say they're Filipinos, mm -hmm. the people from Spain, they warm up, mm -hmm. they, they open up. They, they, there's a certain feeling of, of uh, familiarity and sympathy. Mm -hmm. No, for us, of course, the, the, the cultural, the, uh, the, the very strong cultural ties between our countries yes. is it's something to, that bonds us together. Yes. Uh, but Actually, what, what we do is mainly related with the future, with, yeah. the, with the, the present of our two societies and the future of our countries, mm -hmm. in the sense that we are, our countries are close allies and our peoples are, of course, uh, related for cultural ties. Mm -hmm. But uh, history and heritage, there are channels to, to collaborate on those fields. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we're, we're doing some events on, on on those sites, mm -hmm. uh, and the Spanish Agency for International Cooperation mm -hmm. set up, a, it's called the Escuela Taller, mm -hmm. that is now run by a foundation mm -hmm. uh, to promote the restoration and rehabilitation of historical structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Embassy of Spain is collaborating with the National Historical Institute for, for the um, scanning and uh, uh, recovery of some of the Spanish documents that they are in the in the archives in Spain mm. to make them available mm. for researchers mm. here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is a whole array. But from, from Instituto Cervantes, we focus mainly in contemporary cultures mm -hmm. and, and actually establishing ties to, to face the future. Mm. Uh, we had a motto in the past that was towards a common future. Mm. Which our, our artists, our creators, mm -hmm. both Filipino and Spanish, they, they share common challenges, yeah. common hopes, mm. and we can serve as a, as a bridge builder. Yeah. That's, that's how we see our, our mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, you mentioned um, Spanish language classes. Uh, um, what uh, is the clientele that enroll in Spanish language class? Uh, and uh, what do they use it for? Or do they want to migrate to Spain or do they want to seek employment? Well, they use it, Lisa, for a whole array of, of mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, out of, I just learned earlier this year that out of the 93 centers that Instituto Cervantes has around the world, mm -hmm. uh, the one in Manila, our center is the number one, sometimes number two, I think now is number two, in, in terms of uh, number of registrations. I see. Over 6,400. Wow. The demand of Spanish in the country, in the Philippines, is huge. Mm -hmm. And it's for a number of reasons. Number one is it, it plays an advantage for professional promotion. Mm. For everyone working on a call center, as a mm -hmm. call agent, mm -hmm. uh, it's not new that if you have a Spanish, you are, in a, if you, you are able to communicate in Spanish, mm. you are in a, in a better position to have your salary uh, increased. Yeah. This is because many of these call centers serve the United States, for example, where the Spanish is the fastest growing language. That's true. And the big companies will can only have the contract with call agents in the Philippines is if at least one fourth of the speakers mm -hmm. is able to communicate in Spanish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
now many of our students are looking forward for this. Mm. Instituto Cervantes, as I mentioned, is a non-for-profit, so mm. we are subsidized by the Spanish government. Our mm -hmm. classes are extremely affordable. Mm -hmm. I think it's 160 pesos per hour or something. Oh, that's yeah. very affordable. Yes, yeah. it's <laughs> because it's not a commercial ven uh, venture. Uh -huh. And our teachers, you have to say, our teachers are the, the very best. Mm. So we have an up-to-date, state-of-the-art teaching techniques mm -hmm. with digital boards, with uh, books that are renewed every year, mm -hmm. and uh, teachers that have decades, many years mm -hmm. of, of experience teaching the language. Mm -hmm. So it's, if, uh, as far as we are concerned, it's all for, for the sake of teaching the language, of uh, making it easier for those who need to learn Spanish, yeah. make it easier, make it fun, yeah. make it interactive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it shows where mm -hmm. we, the, the number of students we have is mm -hmm. spectacular. Mm -hmm. Now we're also helping the, um, the Department of Education uh, also realize of the importance of, of Spanish. Mm. And he was trying to, when, when Spanish some years ago became... Uh, um, it uh, was mandatory for a while to have two years of Spanish in, well, the, in the universities. And then this... Uh, well, now <laughs> it's then, a, and then oh, it stopped. Now it's a uh, secondary education. It's um, optional. Mm. Students can take it. So mm -hmm. we are contributing in training the, the Spanish teachers of DEPET Mm -hmm. uh, that they have been doing an amazing work. They come every summer taking their own time. I would like to emphasize that the, mm -hmm. the, the work of, the, of the, the teachers of the Department of Education in the mm -hmm. Philippines, mm -hmm. it's really, really outstanding. Mm -hmm. And they, they come to Instituto every mm -hmm. year, are very familiar with them. Mm -hmm. This is within in the program, within the framework of a program between the Department of Education, uh, Spanish Agency for International Cooperation, mm. Spanish Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. and Instituto Cervantes de Manila, mm -hmm. within the, the scope of activities of the Embassy of Spain. I see. So they, they get their techniques in teaching Spanish more up to date, mm -hmm. they get more familiar, mm -hmm. they also take the, the DELE, the, which is also one of the services that we provide, the official certificate mm. issued by the Spanish Ministry of mm -hmm. Education. Mm -hmm. Uh, accrediting the level of Spanish that every student has. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's a very exciting time. And mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, you know that the Philippines is a hub for teaching English. Yes. I know that many students from Korea, they come mm. to the Philippines because yes. it's closer, it, they get to learn the language. Mm -hmm. Many are realizing that the Philippines can also play the same role, but for Spanish. Yes. Mm. But there is a, okay. there's still <laughs> a lot of work to do. Uh -huh. uh, we need to train more. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, teachers of Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an advantage to speak Spanish in the international community. Mm -hmm. There are 22, more over 22 countries that have Spanish as an official language. Mm -hmm. So when the Philippines goes to international scene uh, and presenting certain issues or matters of polit foreign policy, it's, mm. it, it's an advantage that the representatives, the Filipino diplomats, have Spanish as a, as a second language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also for for students coming to the Philippines from, from Southeast Asia mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. a second language. If they're learning, lear, they're learning English, it's so much easier that they can also learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. And no other country in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. is better suited than the Philippines for that's, this, that's for this venture. Speaking of English, your English is excellent. <laughs> oh, you are too kind, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Um, so you mentioned a, a, a partnership with the DEP-ED. Do you have other uh, Filipino organizations that you partner with yes. and collaborate with? Yes, several. We, we, we see that as an instrumental role of our activity. Our mm -hmm. partnership is some, some of our, what we take pride on. Uh, we, we partner with the Department of Education. We are in partnership with the um, Philippine Development Council of the Philippines mm -hmm. for the last uh, over three, four years. Mm -hmm. and those are the instrumental for our activities. The, the Cultural Center of the Philippines, do you partner with them? Or yes. the National Commission of Culture and the Arts? Uh, 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 you name it. Uh, uh -huh. for okay. With, the with CCP, all of them. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> basically, yeah, the Cultural Center of the Philippines, uh -huh. we have been working closely mm. in the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were planning to, to do some performances later this year. Mm -hmm. We always like to bring some uh, flamenco. Mm. Um, Ooh, uh, I love flamenco. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very intense. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, well, no. maybe we'll talk about the cultural programs uh, after the break. Perfect. Marami pa po tayong pag-uusapan tungkol sa Instituto Cervantes Manila. Dito pa rin sa Art to Art. Magbabalik po kami pagkatapos ng ilang paalala. Thank you.
programang hatid ay sining at kulturang para sa lahat. Magbabalik ang Art to Art. Schedule ng mga inaabangang konsyerto. Update sa mga magagandang panoorin sa mga tanghala ng teatro. Narito na ang Art to Art Calendar. Narito ang ating Arts Calendar. Sa musika, itatanghal ang concert na pinamagatang The American Songbook, Mario Lanza Revisited sa June 1, alas 6.30 ng gabi, Ayala Museum sa Makati City. Tampok ang soprano si Stephanie Aguilar at tenor na si Nomer Nival. Kasama ang assisting artist na si Gabriel Pagirigan. Ito ang una sa isang serya ng mga chamber concerts na gaganapin sa naturang lugar. Matatagpuan ng Ayala Museum sa Makati Avenue Corner, De La Rosa Street, Makati City. Para sa tiket, tumawag sa Ticket World, 891-9999 o sa Cultural Arts Events Organizer, 782-7164. Maaari ring mag-email sa concerts at ayalamuseum.org para sa karagdagang detalye. Sa pakikipagtulungan naman ng PUP University Center for Culture and the Arts, iniahandog ng Coro Obsento ang kanilang kauna-unahang major concert na pinamagatang Cinco, June 10, alas 6 ng gabi, PUP Theater, Santa Mesa, Manila. Limang taon na ang nakalipas mula ng umpisahan ng Coro Obsento ang pagpapatuloy ng pamana ng PUP Bagong Himig Serenata na ibahagi ang kanilang talento sa musika. Samantala, tampok ang pianista si Hiyas A. Hila sa matinee concert ng Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra sa ilalim ng bato ni Maestro Yoshikazu Fukumura itatanghal June 11 alas 4 ng hapon tanghalang ni Canor Abilardo ng Cultural Center of the Philippines. Mga obra ni Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart ang nasa programa kabilang ang overture mula sa operang Cosi Fan Tute at Symphony No. 41 in C Major K551 Jupiter tutugtugin ni Hila ang Piano Concierto No. 23 in A Major, ang CCP ay matatagpuan sa CCP Ross Boulevard Corner Pablo Ocampo Cedar Street, Pasay City. Usapang sining at kultura para sa lahat. Kasama ang balirina ng bayan si Lisa Makuha. Art to Art. Kasama pa rin natin ang direktor ng Instituto Cervantes Manila na si Dr. Carlos Madrid. Uh, Director Madrid, the Carlos. capital of <laughs> Spain. <laughs> I've never to been to Madrid. Um, I've, I've been to Barcelona. Ah, yeah. How do you love it? It's a beautiful oh, it's city. It's a beautiful city, it's yes. Amazing. And uh, there's a Casa Elizalde there. Yes. Um, in... Uh, Barcelona, and uh, apparently it was lived in by my husband's relations until 1964. Oh, wow, that's yes. very recent. <laughs> wow. And then it was the Casa Elizalde was turned over to the, the state to, to be run as a civic center. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Did you see the movie Barcelona last year? There was this uh, oh, no. Filipino film, uh, uh -huh. Barcelona. With no, 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 I haven't seen that. The but Barcelona is bursting in activities yes. and a very artistic city. It's yes. beautiful. In fact, two, no, three of my original Ballet Manila ballet dancers have uh, been um, dancing in uh, uh, the city of Barcelona for a while now. Uh, yeah. Recently? Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they, no, for a while already they've enjoyed um, a long career wow. there. Yeah. So anyway, Barcelona is a beautiful city and it's close to my heart that we have we work closely with the Bal ballet david campos and i think they um, under the auspices of instituto cervantes performed in the cultural center of the philippines yes uh, that was in the year before uh, my time before your time yes i think four or five years ago yeah. well, lisa next time mm -hmm. i will make sure you you visit madrid you're gonna love it i will I will. <laughs> anyway, um, we were talking about the achievements, the many, many achievements of Instituto Cervantes Manila because it was only established in 1991 and yet I think the body of work and the activities, uh, the, the lineup that you had is, is really significant. Um, do you, uh, can you give us like maybe the highlights of the uh, um, activities? You mentioned the película. Um, and there's recently there's the Prado on the streets of 
the Philippines that opened in Ayala Triangle Gardens. Yes. And uh, there's also Dia de Libro. International Book Day. Yes, I International Book Day, among many others, I'm sure. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. I would like to emphasize, uh, thank you for your, for your kindness with, with the work of Instituto. It's the result of a, of a very good team, mm -hmm. both in the Philippines and in Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a team of very devoted professionals. And what it shows also is that in the Philippines in particular, the people has a demand for, for culture, for, mm -hmm. for non-commercial or non-mainstream also. And it's a, it's a, we, we see ourselves as a little humble venue from where people can, uh, can take a peek on what are the things going on in Spain or in the Spanish-speaking countries that mm. we collaborate with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the, the main landmarks that you're mentioning are uh, Instituto recently uh, transferred uh, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. to Makati, mm -hmm. to, to Ayala Triangle, to Ayala mm -hmm. Tower 1, mm -hmm. where we're conducting uh, our services there. Mm -hmm. But um, we're looking forward to, because we, are, we have been always in Manila, mm. in the Instituto Cervantes de Manila. Yes. So we're looking forward to open in the second half of the year uh, a cultural center, a small cultural venue called Casa Azul uh -huh. in Intramuros. Ah, the uh -huh. Philippine government, and I would like to, to emphasize that with, a, with a, very, a very clear vision of mm -hmm. the future, is investing in Intramuros as a, as a touristic center, mm -hmm. as a cultural mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and we'd like to join forces with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Casa Azul will have a, a library, uh, classes, mm -hmm. exhibiting area, mm -hmm. an auditorium where mm -hmm. films will be screened. An auditorium an even. An auditorium. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. we are very excited mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, uh, Instituto Cervantes, the Embassy of Spain, we have a number of yearly activities that you have mentioned two of them the dia del libro i'm making a, a personal effort on that as a as a bookworm that i am mm -hmm. but this has been ongoing for over a decade oh, and okay. uh, we película for example it's uh, the, the spanish the film festival in spanish mm -hmm. because we have uh, a number of films from from our from countries of uh, latin america mm -hmm. argentinian films are spectacular mm -hmm. there is now an ongoing Mm -hmm. uh, festival of Argentinian movies mm -hmm. in, in, mm -hmm. in Makati, mm -hmm. in, um, in Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. But we have also Chilean films and we'll also skin some Philippine films that have been shown in Spain. Mm -hmm. So other than that, we have, uh, you have mentioned the Museo del Prado, the Prado yes. Museum exhibit. Mm -hmm. It's going to be open in Intramuros in June 9. On June 9? June 9. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking mm -hmm. forward for it. It will be Outdoor is an outdoor exhibit uh -huh. in uh, Plaza de Roma, uh -huh. uh, in front of the cathedral and the, and the Palacio del Gobernador area. Mm -hmm. And it shows a very little known uh, painting by Juan Luna mm -hmm. that is in the deposits of the Prado Museum. It's called Cleopatra or the death of Cleopatra, la muerte mm. de Cleopatra. Mm. Mm. It's a very good opportunity to see it. We'd mm -hmm. like to invite everyone to, mm -hmm. to go. Uh, we also have uh, Posporos. Posporos was an initiative, uh, it's matches, no? Matches, Posporos, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the Embassy of, uh, of uh -huh. Spain and with, uh, of course, with the, uh, the support of Instituto is they're putting together contemporary rock bands, indie mm. Mm. bands with Filipino indie bands mm. and they perform together and they, this interaction has proven to be fascinating and the, the, the response of the public is spectacular. So we're, mm -hmm. we're having in, uh, June 3 mm. and in July and in September. I will mm. I would like to invite all your mm -hmm. your viewers and I know there are so many mm -hmm. to to go to our Facebook mm -hmm. Instituto Cervantes Manila mm -hmm. where we have our brochure and our every yes. every 3 months we update uh -huh. our cultural programming. Okay. Okay. And so the uh, cult you mentioned the cultural program uh, that does that work both ways? Do you also foster exchange by with Filipino artists or Filipino maybe students? Do you give scholarships as well to for Filipinos to visit Spain and uh, be educated uh, there? You know, um, is there an ongoing exchange program? Actually, uh, Spain is very, it's very active in the interchange. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the, at the level of students or teachers mm -hmm. or artists. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, with the hand of the Embassy of Spain, there is a cultural program called El Ranchito, where it's a 
it's a residency for mm. a Philippine artist mm -hmm. to stay in a cultural center or a network of cultural centers in Madrid mm -hmm. called Matadero. Mm. It was a, a former slaughterhouse mm -hmm. that has turned into a huge cultural center. Mm -hmm. And within that cultural center in El Ranchito, there is a, there is a program of resident artists. Mm -hmm. and there's a number of Philippine artists that are attending mm -hmm. uh, this year. It's mm -hmm. happening actually in a uh, uh, few weeks. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is uh, an initiative of, of uh, the Embassy of Spain, mm -hmm. for, um, Instituto Cervantes. So it's, we are very much looking forward for it because mm -hmm. it's, as you're saying, it serves bo both ways. Mm -hmm. As uh, cultures in dialogue, we benefit also from showing uh, Filipino artists mm -hmm. what is our uh, contemporary and young artists, what are they doing in Spain. Mm -hmm. And when we have the chance, we always try to bring um, Spanish artists yeah. to, to the Philippines mm -hmm. to, to stay in close contact with, uh, with the Philippine counterparts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's trying to, to help to make a connection, those matches that we're mm -hmm. saying, but not mm -hmm. only with music, mm -hmm. with photography. Mm -hmm. There is also, a, you will see it in the program, um, mm -hmm. uh, exchange of, uh, it, will, it will lead to exhibits and to publications. Mm -hmm. but we're working on it right now. And mm -hmm. uh, also in a couple of weeks, there will be the first results mm -hmm. in, in the photography uh, field also. Mm -hmm. So it, you name it, it's, it, yeah. it's a very exciting time yeah. to, to be here. But what is your most um, popular program? Is, is it still the Spanish language classes? Well, yes, because it, it has, um, with uh, over 3,000 students, it has a, a very specific uh, result mm. in the students. When uh, they really learn Spanish, they, they really command the language mm, and mm -hmm. they find, an, uh, we have a beautiful library in, mm -hmm. in the very heart of Makati mm. where, where the students uh, can go to, to read, to study, mm -hmm. to, to prepare for the exams. So the classes are certainly the, the most popular. Yeah. And, and, it's and do you it have to sense. be a registered uh, student or a registered member of Instituto Cervantes Manila before you can avail of the facilities like the library, for, insa for instance? Not only the students can, can, can enjoy the library. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the library has a registration fee of uh, less than 900 pesos a year. Mm -hmm. It's just a token. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, registered and you can borrow the books you can uh, or the movies the dvds mm -hmm. the the cd mm -hmm. music and and use the the premises mm -hmm. as well so it's not only for students but anyone interested just registering leaving the name and mm -hmm. and it's open for everyone it's uh -huh. open for everyone okay and is there a large um spanish-speaking um community in manila and all over the philippines well in the philippines much to our uh um, regret there's still a lot of work to do mm -hmm. in the sense that in comparison to other to other Southeast Asian countries mm -hmm. in the Philippines there are a, a lesser number of Spanish students mm. there are around 43,000 mm -hmm. all over the country mm -hmm. and in, in Japan there are twice as much mm -hmm. in Vietnam there are uh, many more mm -hmm. so in the Philippines it's a very interesting uh, experience probably because the, fi the, the, the Spanish was not a foreign language mm. for many Filipinos. Yes. Um, as you may know, before World War II, yeah. many of the of the of the Filipino nationalists were using Spanish as a Filipino language, mm -hmm. uh, writing novels, mm -hmm. uh, singing songs, mm -hmm. uh, writing plays. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of our lines of publications in Instituto Cervantes is recovering those publications, mm -hmm. classicos hispano filipinos the mm -hmm. novels that they were written by Filipino writers. Um, Calao or Enrique Laigo mm -hmm. or Antonio Abad, mm -hmm. uh, 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 one of the best, I, I think, Filipino writers in Spanish. Mm -hmm. we, we republish, we, we print again those, those novels. Mm -hmm. There, with 43,000 43, students, I think there's a need of teachers mm -hmm. because the demand is there and yeah. we, we get it all over the country. Mm -hmm. So we're willing, we're looking forward to contribute the training of of Spanish teachers mm -hmm. in the Department of Education. Yeah. Um, and uh, our premises are open 
uh -huh. but uh, there is so much that we can do. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to, to have uh, further meetings with the Department of Education mm -hmm. for increasing the number of Spanish teachers in the, mm -hmm. in the public education system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and for those, of course, interested in joining your programs, inquiring on activities, how can they contact you other than Facebook? <laughs> uh, well, we are, we are located in, in, <coughs> in Ayala Triangle, mm -hmm. in the... In the Stock Exchange building, mm -hmm. the ground floor. The ground floor. Mm -hmm. But uh, Facebook is the main mean of communication mm -hmm. in Instituto Cervantes Manila. Mm -hmm. uh, also in our website, mm -hmm. Instituto Cervantes Manila, mm -hmm. there is uh, the email, and uh, anyone interested, they can drop us an email saying, please subscribe me. We mm -hmm. send a newsletter every month. Mm -hmm. We email every, every event. We send an, an email about it. Mm -hmm. Our brochure is available in the Facebook mm -hmm. uh, website, in the website of of the Embassy of Spain in the mm -hmm. Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone is invited to, to go to all the premises and uh -huh. to see us there. We're always receiving students and all from, from different provinces, from yeah. Manila. Uh -huh. We have classes in, uh, with our, our partners in the library, uh, Or Ortigas Library uh -huh. and Ortigas Foundation. Uh -huh. So the mainly Facebook, I, I noticed, yeah. but, or Twitter, uh -huh. Drop us a message. Uh -huh. uh, Instagram? Do you have Instagram? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. But, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. a good idea. We're, we're yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, Director Madrid, the, the, you mentioned the uh, Prado on the streets will, is opening in, on June 7. Um, uh, June, 9. June 9. June 9. In Intramuros. Sí. Um, uh, for the rest of the year, do you have any other uh, uh, programs or activities opening up also as well? Yes, we have the Posporos uh, concert. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're going to be in June 3 and then in July again and then in uh, August mm -hmm. or September. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have um, the Silent Film Festival with uh, other, other countries. Uh, Silent Film Festival, we have a, a Spanish silent film, mm -hmm. but then this there's uh, live music being played by a Filipino band. Mm, it's, okay. uh, it's, uh, you cannot miss it. It's, uh -huh. it's actually very vibrant, uh -huh. very beautiful. Uh -huh. um, that is in, uh, in August 31 mm. to September 3. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, uh, the... You mentioned some flamenco happening soon? We're working on the dates. We're uh -huh. working on the dates for that. <laughs> but uh, we also have the, the October uh, Film Festival mm -hmm. in Spanish, Pelicula. Okay. And uh, we have the El Ranchito residences in, mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Spain, mm -hmm. in, um, in Matadero. Yeah. And then there's the uh, Transatlantica program mm -hmm. that the Embassy of Spain has started mm -hmm. uh, in collaboration with the Agencia Española, the Spanish Agency for Cooperation and Development. Wow. So it, there's so many things All going on. All of those on. projects, how many people work in the Instituto Cervantes? Not as many <laughs> as, as, as they should. Uh, we, uh, we have a very good team of, of professionals. Uh -huh. and, and are they really all um, um, Spanish or, or no. No, a no, lot no. of them are Filipinos? Oh, many of them are, are Filipinos. Many are Filipinos. Yes, okay. they're working. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I can remember Edwin in the, in the library has been working with us for, for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Instituto Cervantes, as you mentioned, it started in 1991, but mm -hmm. before it was the cultural center of the Embassy of Spain. Mm. And, yeah. and Edwin was there since, since the very beginning. Since the very beginning. Okay, so you have a history. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> and it's certainly very rich. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. Thank today. you for giving, giving us this opportunity and please visit us in, in Instituto. I will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, samahan ninyo kami ulit dito sa Art to Art kung saan ang usapang sining at kultura ay para sa lahat. Ito po ang inyong balirinan ng bayan, Lisa Makuha, nagpupugay sa Artistang Pilipino.